Hey listeners, it's editing Hannah from the future. <laughs> uh, so fun fact, as we were recording this one, we had some issues with the website we were using. We were trying out a new recording website and ended up not going with it because uh, we discovered that almost all of my audio during the brainstorming was lost forever. <laughs> so we have the interview and I was going to just scrap the whole episode, but as I was listening through it, our guest, Peter Fenton and Jenny, do a lot of the heavy lifting. So I was like, you know what? This story was fun. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to try to cobble together pieces that we can. Um, there are a couple moments where I am going to pop in and explain what I was talking about <laughs> uh, so that you can follow along. But hopefully we'll be able to figure out at least the gist of what was going on here. Very fortunate that this happened on a day when we had a guest who was very ready to jump into the brainstorming and didn't need any any prodding or uh, extra suggesting or coaxing from either of us. So uh, sorry if it's any if it's choppy at any point, but hopefully you'll still be able to get the inspiration you need to write something great. All right, here we go. When a family's maid gets himself killed, they escape from prison. Somebody write this. Hi, and welcome to Somebody Write This, where we use a random plot generator to give us an idea and then brainstorm how that could be a thing somebody might want to write. I'm Hannah. And I'm Jenny. And here to help us with our brainstorming, our guest today is Peter Fenton. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, we are super excited to have you here. As we invited you on, I wanted to kind of talk with you a little bit about your writing work because you have a, a, a varied career. Um, you've done film writing, you've done stage writing. Uh, one of your plays uh, had a really successful run uh, this last year. So yeah, tell us a little Ooh. bit about what you what you write. Yeah, so I am I'm a combination playwright and screenwriter. I, I think officially I describe myself as a writer and producer of theater and film because really yeah. I see myself as both for both media. I have been writing scripts since I was 14 years old and I had my first show produced then actually. And uh, now at 27, 28 years old, I actually just had my first play debut off Broadway at the beginning of June of this past year. So very exciting time in my writing career. Ooh, and yes. um, yeah, uh, it's really fun to think in scripts and dialogue. And I'm really excited to dive into this really weird prompt today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I don't know that we've had a playwright on on our. We have a, we've had a lot of writers, but it's mostly folks who wrote for like the the written word words that were intended to be read, not sure. spoken. And so I'd love to hear, especially as somebody who's had who's been able to get their work spoken by other actors and directed by other Ooh, directors. Yes, I'd love to hear about the experience of you know of, of writing something and then hearing somebody else speak it in maybe a different voice than you envisioned, or or how that changes when the words are yeah. spoken out loud for you. Well, it's interesting. I have I have a great deal of respect for novelists, but for me, writing is about creating that opportunity to have your character embodied. And Ooh. so to me, the writing process, like writing the actual words is only half of the process. I feel like the other half of the process is figured out when you have somebody else reading the role. And I mean, I act as well, so I do end up writing a lot of characters for myself. But <laughs> there are, especially when I write women or when I write people who are of a different um, age group or ethnicity or that sort of thing, it mm -hmm. it really, it's a collaborative and community process uh, that I just, I really love. That's, that's why I'm both writer and producer, you know? I like seeing nice. these things through to completion and seeing my characters come to life. I, I sympathize with that. Hannah and I are both theater people. And for me, mm -hmm. that was always the most exciting part was it's on, it's just words on a page and then you bring it to life with mm -hmm. all these people. And then the audience is what really finishes it. And it's magical. Yeah. So it really is. It really is a three part process. I was going to kind of tack onto that and say like, so what, 
like it's interesting to think about that as as part of in the way that we would think of the editing process <laughs> that the editing process for a playwright mm -hmm. or a film writer or a screenwriter has to involve getting to hear it back at you in a way that yeah. you don't that you don't do as much as a novelist where the editing at that point is not is not get somebody else to read this out loud to me <laughs> right yeah absolutely it's um i mean we say we say in the film world especially that a movie is written three times it is, it's written on the page as the script, and then it's written when you actually shoot the thing. And then you take the footage and it's spliced together um, a third time. So really you're getting three different opportunities to revise and improve as reality presents itself. And I think with, with theater and film and writing for both, you're imagining circumstances that you don't really get to see until you get to the production stage. And so, yeah, wow. Yeah. I mean, really I, a director that I worked with recently on, on abandon all hope, uh, my play that was just off Broadway, he said the best dramaturgy happens in the rehearsal process. Um, dramaturgy mm. of course, for you listening at home is really just, <laughs> The improvement of a script, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, knowing what you need to know <laughs> to make a script better. <laughs> okay, with that, we are going to uh, move on and talk about uh, brainstorm our plot. When a family's maid gets himself killed, they escape from prison. All right, so I am fascinated by one word in this log line, and it's himself. Because yep. um, typically with maids, and maybe this is just maybe this is just old school thinking of me, but like typically when I hear maid, I am imagining a woman. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the idea of having a male maid just this sounds like a fascinating character who is mm -hmm. at the center of this. I'm imagining it's a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. Um. Ooh. The maid, this man maid, male maid. Um we we've gotta we've gotta come up with a yeah. name for this guy. <laughs> I have to I have um, to look and see if there is a traditional one. <laughs> yeah. Right, because um cause, cause maid is is a is a very uh still a very gender specific term. Like you could say housekeeper, yeah. but that's different from, from maid, whereas nurse right. has has evolved to where it's either gender. Oh, uh, okay. So right. a lot of people yeah. are suggesting um, valet, valet as the equivalent. But okay. this one is specifically oh, a uh -huh. male maid. So like maybe there is a reason that he is choosing that specific term. Yeah, it's um, like I'm wondering, I'm wondering is, is this character queer? Um, right. Is this, yeah. you know, um, I mean, as, as a gay man myself, I mean, I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for a queer maid in this story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the idea of who is this family that hired a male maid or mm -hmm. did they, did they know that the maid was male? I, I don't know. I just, right. I have so many questions about the, the relationship that led to this family having a maid and I'm imagining the family all gets arrested. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so here's the thing that's that's tricky about this is that we have yeah. this really interesting character, this this male maid, and then he gets himself killed. <laughs> right. And so and that's the I don't, start so, of the story. And that's the start. So I don't know, yeah, if if this is something that happens toward toward the end, because it, it seems a shame that we have this character who I'm interest, interested in who then immediately dies. <laughs> right. And so I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering what what we what we can do with that. What uh what we do with is it saying something about the family? Okay. Is it yeah. Well, what's interesting is also the the timeline here. Because mm -hmm. the way it's written, our first assumption is that he gets himself killed and like Peter said, then they get arrested murder mystery, they get arrested and then they escape from prison. But what if they're already in prison? Already in prison. And he gets himself killed. Hmm. Just throwing that and out. They're there. going like after. They're going after the person who killed their beloved maid. 
Like, possibly. But why it says they... he gets himself killed. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's definitely what happened. Maybe they don't believe that. Maybe that's Gets true. himself killed. To me, gets himself killed sounds like he wandered into a situation he shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. He did something. He did okay. something foolish and okay. put himself in the way of danger. Okay. Okay. Right. So is this a biological family or is it a mob family? <laughs> That's hmm. true. It could be a mob a family. Family for the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a maid for the mob. <laughs> There's our title right there. Yeah. He's oh, he's the cleanup hmm. guy. Oh, oh my gosh. Is. They right? call him the maid. They call him the maid. Because he cleans up <laughs> the crime scenes. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> they could call him Frenchie. <laughs> yep, yep. I love it. Yes. Okay, so now we have the name. My first, my first thought was, um, you know, you know that scene in the fifth Harry Potter movie when, um, like, Azkaban has blown up and uh, Bellatrix Lestrange walks out. Um, oh yeah. I don't know. There's just like this whole wall that has blown up, and yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe there was some kind of explosion. But where does the story go from there? Is my question. Yes. And then they live happily ever after. <laughs> to me, that doesn't um, that doesn't feel like somebody should write that. You right. Know? <laughs> like, I wanna know I wanna know why. What do they want when they escape from prison? I mean besides to be out of prison? Right. Like what what is their what is their goal? Are they if they're a mafia family, who are they going after? what what is the main thing that they are you know lording over as it were yeah future hannah here again so this was the point where i did pull out the title for the book the one that it gave me was wants a book as in he wants a book or she wants a book and although I can't quite pinpoint when in the story it happens, when in the brainstorming it happens, we did ultimately decide to go with we want a book. So you'll hear that being discussed a little bit. Wants a book. Wants a book. <laughs> Frenchie mm. wants a book. <laughs> he wants a book. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, They are a... They are a fraudulent book publishing mafia family yes <laughs> um they have not yet been featured on writer beware so like authors don't know that they're predatory um mm. are you are either of you familiar with writer beware <laughs> no but it sounds self-explanatory yeah 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 it's uh it's this wonderful <laughs> resource to the aspiring writer out there um of predatory agents and book publishers um send us eight hundred dollars to I... start publishing your exactly exactly mm. so so they they make offers that authors can't refuse you know uh <laughs> they are yeah they 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 want a book they they want a book so they the feds were on to them and they went to jail Maybe. Uh -huh. But it was all kind of swept under the rug. And like, writer beware never found out about them. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing ideas out there. <laughs> you, ha you have more than we do right now, huh? <laughs> Great. And when the authors go against them, they kill them? Question mark? So so the maid, the maid is their fixer, right? So yeah. I would imagine the maid officially holds a title like publishing accounts executive or something like that. Uh, you know, somebody who right. ne negotiates the contracts and marketing associate internal division of individual D. What's, what's an agreement word for D? That starts with D. Uh, Marketing associate for individual 
development? No. Individual, none of these start with the word D. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Marketing associate for identification of descent. Yeah, there we go. The marketing associate for identification of descent. There we go. Descent spelled D-I-S-S-E-N-T? Yep. Or D-E-C. Yep. Okay. Because at first yeah. I thought you so said descent, like unhappy, lowering. Yeah. Okay. So when okay. when marketer, like when um authors are unhappy, they send in Frenchie, the marketing associate for in what did we say it was? Identifying descent. <laughs> But it backfills into the word made. <laughs> and so Frenchie comes in. I, I hear you're yeah. uh, unsatisfied with our work. Eyebrow. You know. like Brenda Lowry, an author of women's crime fiction, kills Frenchie. <laughs> she kills him in what she believes is self-defense. Maybe. Man, she's brilliant. Go, Brenda. Go, Brenda. <laughs> and and so he can't get out of it, and so maybe he's, like, supposed to blow up the rest of the family or something, but instead he does it so that they can escape. Wow. He's sacrificing. What a guy. Self-sacrificing guy. And she's like, have you read my latest book? It's impossible to put down. And like she straps a bow oh. that's inside a book. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you didn't know. Brenda you is didn't iconic. Know. I love this. Lady. You didn't know you joined this that you that it would get this silly, did you? <laughs> no, this is this is exactly as silly as I wanted it to become. This is this yes. is great. <laughs> It, it feels like it feels like a it feels like we're sort of coming up with a Wes Andersonian kind of plot, even though Wes Anderson doesn't really ever create female characters. Um, <laughs> but this feels like it could be in a visual style of Wes Anderson, and it would not feel too out of place. <laughs> oh, is Brenda did did Brenda bait them? Like, she writes Ooh. these kinds of novels. Did she start noticing the patterns in, like, her in a writing group? And, and people, I heard this rumor that this guy over here, she like, wanted he was trying to, to get end published. It and then... once and for all. Oh, my God. Yes. What a hero. Hold I had on. to sell my house. I lost my car. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. So, okay. Is... So, now, now the next question. The next question is, what happens when the family escapes? Right. Yeah, this is like What is Brenda going to do now? Well, Brenda obviously goes on the run. Right? Or does she? They escape from prison. Yeah. So this is this is this is the type of story that <laughs> anybody can root Vigilante. for anybody and you would have a reason. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Poor Frenchie. <laughs> This, this sounds like this sounds like episode one of it, like at least a mini series, you know, because then you have like. This also kind of feels a bit like, um, you know, you know that that one meme that's cir that's circulated around at one point where it's like male country artists be like family values and casseroles. I'm gonna make you my wife. And family values, whereas female country artists are like, "Oops, I killed my husband." That's the energy <laughs> this piece has. But Jen, I think I interrupted you. What what was what oh, were you just, coming just in to a say? silly idea? I was like, so now you know Brenda and the and the family are like running around having hijinks during this series, and then like they all stop for November, right? Because, because they're all, they all doing nano. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stops for nano. This feel like <laughs> you could see this happening. Follow in that West tab, Anderson. and in the back with the laptop, you know. <laughs> Listen, the world of writing is intense. Like is. there is so much. Like I mean, yes, we're we're coming up with a very silly story here and I am all for it, but the writing world is whack. <laughs> I I am 100% team Brenda. This is a this is a Brenda Stan household. 
And one last time, future Hannah is here before past Hannah shows back up in the audio. So this was the point where I always do, where I tossed it out to listeners and moved on to recommend a story of our own. I do not remember which one I recommended, so I will not re-recommend it here. So instead, I will turn it over just to Jenny and Peter to share their amazing choices with you. So last time Hannah recommended A Haunting in Venice, which I saw since, and it's definitely an excellent movie. But I also want to recommend the TV series Poirot. Uh, starring David Suchet and it is just a delightful series of these murder mysteries with the adorable uh, Hercule Poirot being himself <laughs> and uh, it's, I had so much fun watching it and discovering all those sto- Agatha Christie stories and like now I need to read all of the books but yeah if you haven't watched that series it's definitely worth the watch it's even worth the buying it in my opinion, it's very well made and I love it so much. So I am very late to the party on this one. And which is weird because I was literally the target audience as it was coming out. But I just picked up the <laughs> Percy Jackson series this summer. Nice. It's incredible. The The books, uh, the two movies that they made in the early 2010s were awful. I did watch both of them and I did <laughs> yeah. not enjoy them. But... I read the I read the Lightning Thief because I saw a production of the Lightning Thief musical, and yeah, the Lightning Thief musical is actually pretty good, like remarkably good. Um, it's it's definitely a theater for young audiences musical, but I just well, yeah. I really appreciated the tone and the wit of it, and I was like, I feel like I would like these books. So I picked it up and Ooh. I read, I told myself I was just going to read the first book because, you know, it's like a middle grade fantasy series, not unlike Harry Potter, um, but with a uh-huh. much less problematic author. And when I, I read it and I was like, oh, wow, this is great. And then I read the second one and then I read the third one and then the fourth one and the fifth one all within the span of like, I don't know, a month and a half. So... <laughs> I have become a bona fide Percy Jackson kid. Um, I'm really excited for the Disney Plus series that's coming out in December. Ooh. And it sounds like Rick Riordan was heavily involved in the production <laughs> and development of the series. So that's... I'll be really interested to see how they adapt mm-hmm. the books to a TV series. And yeah, that is my plug for today or my recommendation for a story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram and threads. I mean, technically, I'm also on Twitter, but I don't really go there anymore. Um, you can find me, you can find me at Peter Fent, uh, yeah. literally just start typing my name and then stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I am. Yeah, so I'm Peter Fent on all relevant social media platforms. And I have a website. It is by peterfenton.com b y and then my full name.com and i right now am <clears throat> i'm working on revisions to my latest slash upcoming play um it is a Ooh. dark comedy drama retelling of the peter pan story it's called i think we're lost <laughs> yeah Ooh. i have aged up the cast to be college aged uh, because I resonated really strongly with thinking about coming up on the end of undergrad when I was 21, 22, mm-hmm. being like, I don't want to grow up. And I feel like in the present day, um, I feel like being at the end of undergrad or being at the end of high school really is that pivotal time of being at the edge of your adolescence. So I wanted to explore that. And I also made Captain Hook a woman and I made Tinkerbell a mob Ooh. boss. So it's yes! a lot of fun. <laughs> That sounds awesome. All right, folks. Thank you so much. That is our episode. As a reminder, you can find us every other Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts and join our Patreon for bonus material. Today, we especially want to thank our patron, Nathan, for supporting us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at WriteThisPod or on Facebook slash Somebody Write This. And if you've been inspired by this episode and have questions or comments or a bit of story or a script or anything else, email us at somebodywritethis at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. We'll be back with another episode in two weeks. We'll see you then. And as they say, if you want to keep your milk sweet, 
leave it in the cow.